Hey everybody, it's Josh Dorkin from BiggerPockets.com. Today we've got Kevin Kaczmarek for you. CapitalBlueprints.com is his site, and he can be found on BiggerPockets at BiggerPockets.com slash users slash MyCapBlue. After six takes, I finally got it right. What's up, Kevin? <laughs> Not much, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Kevin, yeah. for those of you who don't know, is is a longtime member of Bigger Pockets and is also one of our weekly contributors to the Bigger Pockets blog. Definitely be sure to check him out over there. What's up, Kev? So so we're here to talk about you, your business, real estate, all sorts of fun things. Why don't we open up with something interesting? Kind of flip it a little bit. Sure. You're a BP guy, you use BP a fair amount. I'm told you've done some good things as a result of the site. You know, that that's a good question because like when I think about just the last 24 hours, like this is this is my life in the last 24 hours. Um, I had a conference call around 5 o'clock with a gentleman in Memphis, did a Skype video with a business partner in Australia like 10.30 last night, sure. woke up early this morning to talk to somebody in Europe, then actually got a phone call from somebody in California asking me a note question based on one of my articles. And then in my office is a, a broker that I met through Bigger Pockets. Nice. And, you know, so that, that's just one day. And like when I think about that, like majority of my business today is because of relationships and friendships that I built with Bigger Pockets. That's great. Um, you know, gone to conferences with Bigger Pockets members made good friends. You know, the one thing that I really like about Bigger Pockets is when I'm going on a trip somewhere, I probably know somebody there. Yeah. And it's really neat to be able to go somewhere and say, hey, I've got a friend here that I can network with. You so I, I kind of turned this into like my own little Facebook world, I guess. No, that's... <laughs> turned friends across the country and the world. That's great. That's great. Hey, I mean, you know, I you, you told me you wanted to talk a little bit about it. I, I didn't expect that to be what you were going to talk about and I think that's fantastic I mean I, I really do think that's a testament to to the site itself um, I'm very happy you shared it I think that's that's fantastic um, and you know while we're on the topic I don't want to dwell on this we'll talk about it for one more second and then we'll get into the meat of it but um, sure. what is it that has allowed you to become successful as a result of bigger pockets what are you doing on our site um, that that allows you to meet all these people and 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 build your business and and make connections and things like that. You know, the first thing that I, I did on Bigger Pockets is, that, is I became a contributor. Okay. It, it wasn't like hopping on the site and saying, "Hey, I've got this investment opportunity," or "I need this." It was just giving to the Bigger Pockets community. I think that's where your leadership comes into play. That comes across on the site. That you know, it is a community where if you can give to the community. Uh, you will receive, and I think that's standard in all areas of business. So that's kind of how I dug into bigger pockets. And I mean, I was on the site every single day. You know, not not trying to go eight hours a day because I didn't want to get burned out. But right. if you spend forty five minutes a day, just you know, interacting in the forums, the blogs, reading the bulletins, and just networking with people. I mean, yeah. when you put a colleague request out there, call the person, learn yeah. a little bit what they're doing. That, that's that's how I. Kind of develop the relationships that I have on bigger pockets, and and, and that's why I'm so thankful for it. So I, I mean, that's why we're here today. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I get the rights to that video. I got it. <laughs> you heard it here first, Kevin Kazmarek, Bigger Pockets. There's oh, love, right. love. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So step out of BP. Let's let's talk about you. Let's talk about your business. How you got to where you are. What you're doing today. Let's start start at the beginning. Take me back. Taking you back. Yeah. Like, so, you know, I, I understand. I know you were you were a wholesaler uh, back in the day. You know, how'd you get started as a, as a real estate guy? You know, like so many people, I, I started out by reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And many, many years ago, I would always set uh, goals of getting into real estate. Uh, New Year's resolution every year, I'm, I'm going to get become a real estate investor. Right. But for whatever reason, you know, there was always a mental block. Uh, I don't have enough money, or I don't know where to find the deals. I don't know who to work with. Right. Um, you know, so it, it took many years of just kind of like getting over that mental hurdle. And at the time, I was working in information technology. I was a director of IT for an automotive company, okay. and I wasn't doing what I was passionate about. 
um, and spent a couple years just actually trying to break into the industry and found a group that was wholesaling and joined the organization to kind of run the day-to-day -day operations and along the way got to learn the basics of real estate investing. So I was able to do a, a nice transition between corporate America and real estate investing and kind of that's how I got started. Wow, that's great. So, so, you know, you had this hurdle that was, that was holding you back. Um, you wanted to do it on your own. Um, and your, your way of over, overcoming that hurdle was to kind of go, go in through the back door, so to speak, on the business end, right? I mean, um, do you think had you, had you not gone that route that that hurdle still would have been there, that you would have had something holding you back, that mental block? Well, you, you, you said the magic word there, going alone. And I realized that real estate investing and the various things that we can do as real estate investors, it is a team sport. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, to go out there and try to be a lone wolf and try to learn all this stuff myself, I, I would not be where I am today if I didn't, you know, partner up right. or utilize the, the skills that make everybody unique in real estate. I mean, you can't be an insurance specialist, a repair specialist, a broker, you, you know, all the facets of real estate investing, you can't do it yourself. So if you can surround yourself with good people, you know, which is what we've done here, um, it allows you to accelerate your opportunity and the things that you can do in real estate investing. So, I mean, it's a great lesson to learn early on that I apply today in everything I do. I mean, I don't do anything alone here at Capital Blueprints. I right. mean, it's partnerships and opportunities and networking it's it's never trying to do it yourself right and <clears throat> how do you how do you go about finding the right people to team up with now in your case you've got a company you're, you you know you're you're hiring folks but you know take take the small time investor who's you know thinks he's on his own or she's on her own and they're trying to figure out how to go about finding other investors to, to partner with, or they're trying to figure out, you know, what's a good, how do I find a good agent, or, or what title company to work with? You know, how do you how do you go about vetting people? You know, it starts with networking. Yeah. Uh, in fact, like when I think about how I got started as a note investor, I only got started because I was able to call and talk to people that were experienced in that, and you know, I mean. This business is no different than any other business in that it's reputation, it's referrals, and it's track record. Yeah. So if there's an area of the business that you're interested in, I mean, again, I refer back to bigger pockets, and this is not meant to be an infomercial no. for that, but it's just it's the truth that you know bigger pockets is a great way to be able to you know use the term vet uh, prospective people to work with. So whatever area that I was interested in doing work with, I use networking. Um, and then a little trial and error. I sure. mean, just since I've been here in Indianapolis, I I've gone through a couple of different uh, property management companies. Gotcha. But that's not to say that uh, it hasn't been a good learning process, yeah. and I have a very strong team now. Yeah. So, you know, it's trial and error, but it, the, the best way to kind of move forward is a network, referrals, and, and just, you know, talk to people. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, I... I got to break in and tell you a little story about Indianapolis because, you know, I the Circle rarely, City. <laughs> rarely do I do this, but you know, the the mention, the mere mention of the city of Indianapolis brings up a memory that that you know was a little bit uh, disconcerting for me. Oh gosh, <laughs> we, we go back to I believe it was the year two thousand and seven, oh, 97, not two thousand seven. I was driving from New York to St. Louis. They were doing some construction on the highway there, and my car broke down, and it was one lane, and I was holding everybody back. I got this vapor lock on my car, and I had to had to get the car to the side somehow, even even though there was no side. So we, I finally finally get it there, and uh, you know I'm out, I'm sweating, I'm dying, and I got I've got no water. My car's full with all my stuff. And some car drives by, and they're like, "Hey, buddy, you hot?" I was like, "Yeah," and they threw a can of soda at me. Oh gosh! And and to this day, that's my memory of your city. Unfortunately, oh. <laughs> that's my personal experience. Anyway, I digress. I thought, it, thought I'd share that with you. Uh, well, I, I haven't had the same experience, but then again, I've only been here for about six months, so <laughs> time will tell if, yeah, if I get exactly. can thrown at me. It is hot today, so it's you never tough, know. It's a tough town, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So, so you, you know, you're doing your thing. You, you, you're working for this this company. Um, you've partnered up with these guys doing these wholesale deals. You're running the business side of things, um, and and while doing that, you're 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 learning um, how to wholesale and, and the other aspects of the business. How did you then transition to what you're doing today? And and tell us what what it is that you are doing today. Sure. Well, along the way, I had. I had studied self-directed IRAs, okay. and you know I, I've told you before that one of my passions is is retirement investing. Yeah, and, it, and that's kind of why I got into real estate because I knew that real estate is a great way to create passive income for retirement. Yeah. So, I mean, as weird as it sounds, when I was 15 years old, I was passionate about retirement, not getting to retirement, but building wealth for retirement. Okay. You know, I, I remember I grew up in the Dearborn, Detroit area, so we, we got to see the auto industry go through ups and downs, yeah. and you kind of understand the power of uh, financial security. Yeah. So that's kind of why I started studying real estate, because I knew passive income would be, you know, powerful in that. Right. Uh, um, and then along the way, like I mentioned, self-directed IRAs, like, just jumped out of the page at me, like, wow, this is, this is the way that for those that can't find the cash because that's tied up in their own retirement, they can actually use their retirement to get into real estate. Yeah. And so and I, I don't I don't want to cut you off on this, but um, really quickly for those who are watching who don't know what a self directed IRA is, how it works and what the difference is between any other kind of IRA, fill us in really quick. Okay. Uh, the the only difference between a self directed IRA and what is considered a traditional IRA that you get from a brokerage account is you can pick the investment. Yeah. So you can self-direct. So we always tell people at Capital Blueprints, we help you invest in what you're passionate about. So if you're not passionate about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, that's okay because a lot of people are more passionate about real estate. So you can buy real estate in your IRA. You can buy rental properties. You can buy land contract notes. Right. Um, you know, commercial buildings. You can do all that in your IRA. So taking that passion for retirement income self-directed IRAs, you know, I built Capital Blueprints here as a education, mentoring, and opportunity company. Yeah. So we, we spend, you know, the, you know, every single waking minute, essentially, um, trying to spread the good word of what a self-directed IRA can mean to IRA investors and, and non-IRA investors. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, because it's not about creating wealth in a 401k, it's about creating income for retirement. That's yeah. that's the biggest misconception. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a, a portfolio worth two million dollars. We we saw what happened when the stock market crashed. But if you're producing two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in passive income using real estate, guess what? That's a powerful, powerful retirement portfolio. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think there's a fair amount of brokerage houses who are pissed off at at, at you now. You know, now that you're <laughs> taking business away from uh, them, buying and churning uh, stock accounts. But uh, you know, I, I, we'll, we'll 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 get there another time. Um, so so you got you're you're focusing on on building long term wealth, uh, retirement wealth, and you're doing that primarily. Uh, from my understanding, through through land land contracts, yeah. L land contracts is is always been a preferred way of creating wealth because I think we talked about it. You know, one of the things is uh, there's not a handy bone in my body, and land contract note investing is is one of those nice investments where you can almost look at it as an annuity. Yeah. You know, you buy something and you're going to get a payment every single month, and you know. Until that time period expires, you can count on that money coming in. Yeah. Uh, the other side of note investing is if they don't pay, you own the underlying asset. So yeah. it, you, you help mitigate your own risk. So that's why I always like note investing out, and I like it as a good strategy for people that want to create passive income sure. and don't want to be hands-on. Right. Now, what for, for those people who, who don't know the difference, is there a difference between land contract, note investing, and you know, just regular note investing or, or paper investing, um, is there a difference or is it just another way of, of putting it? Well, you know, I, don't, I don't know if everywhere in the country uses land contracts, so I'm glad you kind of differentiated that because, sure. uh, you know, it, let's call it paper. Yeah. You know, it's an, it's an IOU. I mean, that's the best way of looking at it. You're buying an IOU 
that is secured by a piece of real estate. So land contract uh, investing is it's paper. It's it's mortgages, exactly. it's notes, it's 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 just another it's another way of describing the same thing. Yep, it's buying a private mortgage. Gotcha. Absolutely. Cool. So we we did an interview the other day with somebody. Um, anybody can look it up, um, and it's an interview with Lok Rao. Um, you'll find it on our YouTube channel. You'll find it on the Bigger Pockets blog. It's it's uh, Note Investing 101. Lots of great uh, details in there. We'll skip most of that stuff. I don't want to hit you and beat you up about that stuff because we we did cover it already. Um, and and Lok's great. I mean, uh, I've had a chance to talk to Lok, and you know, if anyone gets a chance to read his post, I mean, he. He gets some great information about note investing as well. So I, you know, he's a, he's a he's a good resource as well. Him and you know, yeah, pockets. So. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Plugs for you. Yeah, jeez, man, holy cow. Yeah, no, but but look, I mean, that I think that's a testament to um, to new investors that you know, both both Kevin and Loke are are uh, note investors, and and they're not in competition, though they are, you know potentially in competition what you guys demonstrate is that by working together you can build your business and you can expand your business um you don't need to fear your competitors uh you need to embrace them you know i think that's the new way of doing business yeah. in general you yeah. know there's enough business to go around for everybody yeah. uh, in fact like when, when i think about capital blueprints i mean we're not out here competing with the other real estate firms we're here to help them get more business right you know so if you're a wholesale company that wants to learn how to sell to self direct IRA clients that's how we help you know right. I, I'm not looking to compete I'm actually looking to help people grow their business right. and create more wealth so yeah. yeah it's it's a new way of doing business I mean the internet's right. kind of like uh, you know lowered the the guard of everybody and now yeah. we help each other and that's the best way we, we run businesses sure sure um, so, so let's I mean let's let's get into um, the note space a little bit, um, you know, skipping past 101, um, you know, let, let's talk about maybe some of these more sophisticated strategies that um, folks aiming for retirement can um, can undertake in order to, to build their portfolio. You know, who's your typical client and, you know, what does the process typically look like when, when you're working with them um, in, in order to, to help them uh, work towards wealth in, in their retirement accounts. Sure. You know, and if somebody's a, um, a good candidate for note investing, they're, they're probably somebody that is interested in real estate but doesn't want to be hands-on, yeah. um, likes the idea of passive income, and is using, you know, note investing as, as one of a couple strategies. Um, we talked a little bit, you know, that there's some work being done right now so that we can work with some financial advisement firms as well. Right. Uh, to give a full uh, retirement prospectus to people, so note investing is like it's like the the ground floor. Uh, you know, it's getting started of getting an asset in your self directed IRA that gives you cash flow, sure. and then from there, you know, you kind of expand from there. So those that are looking to to get into real estate, note investing is a good way to get started for them in their retirement for, portfolio because it doesn't require you know, getting those phone calls, hey, the hot water tank's out. Well, right. well guess what? That doesn't apply to a note. Right. Uh, right. A note is, did they pay or did they not pay? It's cut and that, yeah, that's a perfect IRA strategy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's not, and, and it's not um, risk, uh, it's not without risk, right? I mean, you know, as, as a note investor, the downside is certainly in for having to foreclose on somebody. Um, and I'm sure there's there's other um, things that that emerge that turn turn out to be headaches, but yeah, the headaches like, aren't the 3 a.m. phone calls. Yeah, I mean let let's kind of look at the the good and the bad. Sure. Uh, good, good side is you buy a note at a at a great discount, and what what that means is maybe the note has a a value of a hundred thousand right. dollars. Okay, meaning that the person's going to pay a hundred thousand dollars over the course of so many years with interest. Yep. And maybe you get it at a great price. Maybe you get it at $50,000. Sure. Okay? You're going to collect that stream of payments for however many years, and just it's like an annuity. It's going to pay you for 30 years. Great retirement strategy. Right. Now, bad side. Say you buy that same note, and you collect about three payments. person stops paying. You've got to go through the forfeiture procedure. 
depending on what state you're in, um, you know, here in Indiana, it's about a three-month process. Yep. But along that time, maybe the property is vacant. Maybe they vandalize the property. Right. Taxes build up. Insurance has to be covered. So you, you incur some carrying costs. Sure. But if you buy the note at the right price, you've bought it for the value of the asset or, or maybe, you know, better value than the asset. So even if you have to forfeit on somebody or foreclose on somebody, you still have the asset to go start all over again. There's a there's a, a powerful note saying, and I've written it on the, the weekly column, is you make money when they pay, you make more money when they don't. Right. And that's not meant to be a strategy of like, oh my gosh, no investing is about kicking people out of properties. Right. That That's not it at all. Right. But it's so it kind of lets you know that if the worst case scenario does happen, yeah. you have the underlying assets. Right. Uh, you know, yeah, you can I mean, take I, the property, basically. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then you can turn that property into a rental if you want to, right. or you can go resell it on contract. Right. I mean, I, I just, I, I just had to go through the process uh, last month myself, where I actually took a contract and just converted it back to a rental. In fact, that was one of the articles I wrote on the weekly column. So, uh, to say all that too is the articles that I write every single week are based on experiences. Yeah. They're, they're all based on experiences. I mean. You know, I always like to share things that have happened in my note investing career because they're going to pop up for everybody that's interested right. in note investing. Right. And and look, some people actually aim for that strategy of of finding you know C grade paper, you know, and and finding you know buying an asset, buying buying the paper um, to get the asset to get the asset right. So they get the dip paper at discount in order to get the asset to take it back when when they have to foreclose on on the deal, right? I mean that's that's a strategy. That you know that and that is and that's not a strategy I employ. But the sure. non performing note space is yep. is, a, is a very popular space right now, and and it is just that it's okay. Here's a piece of paper. What's the greatest discount I can buy it at so that I get a good value for the asset? Because I know I'm going to have to go through a little bit of hassle, right? Right. It's a it's a great strategy, yeah. uh, not one that I've employed myself personally, just for own personal preferences. Sure, sure. But but it's a good strategy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, the people who who are doing that, let's you know, let's clarify really quick because I don't want anybody who who's watching to to get the wrong idea. Yeah, these aren't dirt bags. You know, these are these no, are people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. no, but seriously, I mean, people, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and these are good people helping out in, in, in tough situations quite often, you know. Right. Um, it's like any other investment. There's There's got to be enough for it to be a win-win scenario. Right. Non-performing notes can be a win-win scenario for the, the owner of the paper and the person buying it. Yeah, absolutely. And now do you focus, um, do you focus nationally or do you focus um, – uh, primarily in your area or or in some geographic zone or or what's your you know if you if you'll share of course well it, i mean our home base is in indianapolis and we've got an office in michigan as well yeah. um and we are in the process of building up partnerships in in 10 cities near us and if you look at a map indianapolis is like the hub to Cincinnati, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, Milwaukee. I mean, the list kind of goes on. If I just kind of draw a circle, uh, Indianapolis is, is a great hub for us. So yeah. we're, we're building partnerships in and around our area. But when I, when I think about who I do the most business with, right. uh, it, it, it tends to be pretty international. I, I get teased all the time that I, that I do more business globally than I do locally. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got friends in India, I've, you know, done business, uh, talking to people from Bora Bora. In fact, sure. uh, we met some people in Bora Bora and uh, going down to Florida in a couple of weeks to do some business with them. Um, Australia, New Zealand, That's great. Uh, United Kingdom, Canada. Yeah. I just met somebody through a conference from Bigger Pockets uh, that I'm doing business with. So wow. uh, uh, the possibilities are endless of where we're going, but you know, yeah. our primary focus is, is just on using the self-directed IRA as an education, mentoring, and opportunity company. And once people understand the concept, you know, then we can partner up. Then we can find opportunities for them. And like I said, we can enhance the business of others. All right. Now, why don't we really quickly just kind of get into, um, from, from your experience and from what you've gone through, um, you know, I, I'd say that most people who are who, who might be watching this interview are probably early stage investors, probably not the most sophisticated, but you know, somewhere somewhere in the earlier halves of their career. 
Um, if I came to you and I said, hey, Kevin, you know, I'm, you know, I, I want to get into real estate, whether it be notes or flipping or landlord or whatever, you know, based on your experience, what would you say to me? You know, what's, what would you say the path that I should take is, you know, say I've got a little bit of cash, what would you recommend I did to get going and build up my, my portfolio? Say I'm a guy in my tw mid 20s or 30s, you know, I've got time, there's no rush. How would you proceed? Well, you know, the smartest thing right away is pick what one area you want to focus your business on because, you know, as you're getting ready to get started, you're hearing about, you know, wholesales, flips, tax liens, uh, land contracts, seller finance. I mean, the, the terms that get thrown out, commercial, residential, yeah. you know, find you know, through all their studies that they're doing, find the one area they want to focus on. Uh, I found my uh, passion with... IRAs and seller financing because that's who I am. Yeah. And those that are getting ready to start out, if you're not into flipping properties, don't force it. Yeah. Just because there was a TV show out there that made it seem very popular right. doesn't mean it's right for everybody. Right. You know, so be true to who you are, what you're passionate about, then seek out people that are doing what you want to do and see how you can help them. Yeah. You know, and that is the best way to get an on-the-ground education because it, I love reading books and I love studying the subject matter, but until you actually get out there, start talking to people, and actually start taking on some of the tasks and responsibility, um, you know, you'll, you'll forever be just sitting on the sideline. And it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Take what you're passionate about, seek out those that do it better than, than you think you could ever possibly do it right. and help them out and along the way you'll learn what you need to learn right. and you'll be able to go start your career. That's great. That's, no, that's really good advice. Um, kind of running semi-low on time. We, we talked a little bit long about this crazy website. I don't, I don't know what it is. What's it called? <laughs> Capitalblueprints.com <laughs> um, But uh, <laughs> You know, before before we wrap it up, um, you you do have your your company Capital Blueprints, um, which we we've certainly uh, you've plugged a little bit once or twice. <laughs> and uh, I've heard from Alan Mulally, the CEO of Ford. So <laughs> hey, man, it's all good. So, um, and and your 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 company does help people um, in in their retirement to get to retirement using various strategies and things. I you know take a second and tell us really quick, and then we'll. Wrap it up. Sure. I mean, you know, no matter if somebody's just interested in getting into real estate and doesn't have the money, but know they have it in their in their retirement account, yeah. we can yeah. help. Yeah. Uh, those that are looking to get their first investment done, we can help. Those that have done one investment in real estate and want to do more, we can help. Those that want to do bigger deals, we talk about things like syndication and you know bigger things, we can help. Yeah. Um, so all stages of the of the planning process of creating passive income for retirement is how we can help because ultimately this isn't about you know anything other than you know spend more time with our family having more choices and having the the, the, the freedom to have fun I mean I mean this, this interview you know you and I have had a lot of fun because we have the freedom of choice and, and that's what we want to be able to have what's that nothing. <laughs> oh, did I say speak for you? I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> but no, I mean, that's the beauty of real estate investing it is, is, you know, especially when you do it in retirement planning, it helps you get the freedom of choice. It helps you build that income so that, you know, when you wake up and you don't want to hit that alarm clock, you want to sleep in, real estate can do that. So yeah. that's what we're here to do is take people from whatever stage they're in and help them with their self-directed IRA, buy real estate, or grow their retirement income. Fantastic. All right, man. Well, it's Kevin Kazmarek. You can find him on biggerpockets.com at biggerpockets.com slash users slash mycapblue. And he already plugged his website, so if you haven't heard it yet, rewind and watch again. What uh, is it? It's Capital Blue. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Kevin, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on board. And... Uh, we will, uh, every Wednesday typically, uh, check out Kevin's column on Bigger Pockets blog. He's yep. on the forums. He's all over the place, so check him out. And uh, 
He's a good Cal- guy. Question, yeah, let's talk. So. He's a good guy as well as a, a smart cat who knows what he's talking about. So definitely get in touch. Thank you. Take care, Kevin. Oh, you too, buddy. BiggerPockets.com.